Hi, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Inaya Rahmani. I'm from the Faculty of Social and Political Sciences, Universitas Indonesia. I'm here to present on digital uh, media uh, and Indonesian culture. Uh, as part of the 2020 Iconic Conference hosted by the Directorate General of Culture, Government of Indonesia, and uh, the Faculty of Humanities, Universitas Indonesia. And before I begin, I'd like to give uh, some context about how I see um, uh, the, uh, how I position digital media uh, in, a, in the historical juncture we live in today. Uh, globalization has uh, intensified uh, the movement of uh, people and goods all over the world. And 10, 20 uh, years into this situation, um, the global pandemic happened um, and um, the intensification of the spread of the virus uh, posed some important questions towards how we organize our societies and how we are uh, more interconnected, the, co the consequences of how we've become more interconnected. And in certain contexts, um, the way the virus has reminded us of the kinds of social disconnects or the kind of social bonds that cannot be continued or need to be paused because people's work have shifted into uh, their homes and um, people need to keep their distances uh, in public areas uh, reminds us um, that this is occurring in a time where our uh, interconnectedness is has actually become accelerated. And um, this kind of uh, shift from uh, our workspace into our uh, home um, poses important questions as well about the kind of jobs that can survive COVID-19 and the kinds of jobs that can't. Some people who are in, uh, workers especially who are in um, the manufacturing sector or manual labor um, are either within, uh, are either suspended or terminated because their jobs uh, no longer exist, or they're forced to continue uh, to um, be physically mobile uh, despite uh, times of social distancing. And this reminds us of the kind of uh, hyper competitiveness in the labor market in which uh, the jobs uh, and employments uh, provided are limited uh, compared to the amount of productive uh, labor force. And this is actually a continuation of the withdrawal of the state uh, in providing the basic necessities uh, for human beings to live in the 21st century. And this we can see as well in the provision of health services, education, housing, water, etc. The basic uh, goods that we need to survive uh, in order to live um, have increasingly been permeated by the private sectors. Um, and this happened because um, uh, rising, um, uh, the increasing economic growth that we see in the global south come together with social inequalities. Because much of this growth is felt by the upper layer of society or what David Harvey calls the upper redistribution of wealth. Uh, this backdrop stand in contrast uh, against what it means for us when in times of uh, the global pandemic, we universally suffer, we, uh, our movements are limited, um, our, uh, we may become uh, more disoriented because our work transcends space and time, despite our physical uh, presence uh, have become immobile. Um, and the kind of precarity that are felt, that is felt uh, across classes um, and the ways in which we universally suffer because um, uh, massive testing, uh, access to healthcare has become increasingly uh, commercialized and um, its access limited to the majority of people are universal, but how we specifically suffer is a matter of class position, a matter of gender, a matter of religion, a matter of ethnicity, race, etc. There are so many elements, social elements as into, that goes into play in which we experience um, this kind of disconnect caused by or uh, intensified by COVID. And this is the background within which I'd like to approach digital media because digital media is one of the social tools uh, that could either enable, hinder, um, uh, smooth over or uh, grease uh, the wheels that churn within our society. 
And if we look into social media narratives, including the formal government platforms, the Indonesian government states that there is 90% recovery for COVID and that we shouldn't panic. And this is consistently narrated, narrated through uh, national platforms, digital national platforms. And this has been responded by with criticism by civil society actors, such as scientists, journalists, and activists some of whom have experienced cyber attacks, experienced doxing or the revealing of private identities online um, of individuals and also media organizations within the alliance of independent journalists, for instance. And this tension between civil society and the state uh, or the way uh, the government is carrying out policy response toward COVID in Indonesia um, is in contrast with the kind of resilience that are happening on a community level. We can see kampung lockdowns or the lockdown of neighborhood uh, by civilians in uh, Jakarta and Surabaya as early as March 2020. Uh, we can see uh, upper uh, upper class neighborhoods uh, mobilizing charity towards the uh, vicinity of their areas, such as the providing of some or the basic staples for those who have lost their jobs. Uh, and we can also see homemakers or women who even before COVID have experienced precarity and casualized contracts and the sector within which they're part of is hardest hit by COVID, which is the care sector, such as hospitality and education are now shifting into um, uh, selling uh, food online, uh, which, uh, with, uh, which has been enabled by uh, the digital market because they are able to tap into social media platforms to promote their uh, online products. And this has also caused the shortening of distribution channels for food and basic supplies. And this comes together with a kind of stress and social bonding that is um, amplified because uh, consumers in their houses buy, tend to buy, purchase um, goods and foods from people that they trust. And at the same time, though, while there is this gap between media narratives, formal media narratives, and the kind of social resilience on a grassroots level, level um, it shows the kind of social inequalities uh, that are at play at home and also in public spaces and also in the labor forces. The kind of social inequalities felt at home are uh, have gendered elements, for instance, uh, mothers who play uh, double roles or carries out uh, double shifts at home, uh, now have to uh, juggle um, work and their household uh, duties uh, within the same space, uh, within the, the domestic space. And at certain times, their domestic space, by means of these Zoom video conferences, become publicized and mainstream into public, uh, public arenas. So there's this gender elements of the kind of social inequalities in the household. At the same time, during the short crisis, some laws have been passed um, and part of the economic recovery program um, uh, that aligns with um, our government responses towards COVID-19 uh, that has increased um, uh, precarization, uh, which also has been criticized by uh, civil society elements. And uh, what we see today uh, by means of taking the case of digital media, media narratives and the way uh, ordinary people use digital spaces and markets to sustain their livelihoods uh, also demonstrate the kind of um, acceleration of upward redistribution through uh, social media platforms. We see an increasing number of capital uh, accumulation among um, US billionaires that own the largest platform or most popular platforms such as um, Facebook and also uh, Zoom. Uh, so we can see that while COVID has increased uh, precarity uh, so this crisis um, uh, in some ways have normalized uh, capital accumulation and people uh, not having equal opportunities in the labor market because on a daily basis, they can find other ways to sustain their livelihoods by means of the digital uh, market through social media platforms. And um, the ways forward, we can see that in the name of economic recovery, unfortunately, outsourced work and freelance work is uh, our present and future. 
um, the only way that the government and corporates can um, uh, sustain the economic shock brought by COVID-19 is through um, casualizing their workforce. And some laws have been passed to ensure this in Indonesia. And this unfortunately would exacerbate the kind of social inequalities that was present even before COVID-19. And the social elements that play into um, uh, these social inequalities such as gender, race, ethnicity, will continue to fragment societies based on identities and who benefits from this process. It's the digital capitalists and corporates. And this poses the important question about how, um, how we can cope or how, how we can manage as uh, members of the society, be it academics, activists, or journalists. Um, we need to have a common agenda in terms of uh, how to carry out our society uh, in, uh, after COVID. And this includes um, a common agenda of wealth distribution because those who, have, um, who are able to work from home uh, have transitioned into the post-COVID economy and those who are uh, excluded from it uh, will continue to um, experience labor precarity and, um, and uh, scarcity of jobs after COVID and are left to fend off for themselves. And this, can, this we can see in many of the narratives and digital media. At the same time, though, social media uh, has formed a digital market space. We can see this in Tokopedia and Shopee, and we can see this in the more informal setting of Instagram, um, in which um, a platform not designed to, uh, for online purchasing and e-commerce is being used to sell uh, garments and food. Um, this opens up new market spaces alongside digitalization, and this also poses an important question for the humanities who is being excluded who is not able to access digital media, who is not able to be part of the digital uh, market space, and also whether uh, internet infrastructure in certain areas, especially in regions, um, are, are excluded from accessing this market space because of the basic um, lack of internet infrastructure. And on the level of communities, uh, we can see the uh, resilience or the, the ability to adapt to shocks, be it uh, health shocks, social shocks, social shocks, economic shocks, or natural shocks. Because as far as uh, some communities uh, have experienced, uh, bureaucratic governance has failed them for long ever since uh, the neoliberalization of the economy. And uh, they continue on their lives uh, uh, fending off for themselves because they have expectations on the government to provide them with uh, um, uh, services. And while this uh, system or the just the ability to survive continues uh, monetized by social media. And that's the end of my presentation. Uh, and thank you very much.